afternoon and welcome today to today's webinar on fire resistant hydraulic fluids for hot forming. The webinar is sponsored by Quaker Chemical Corporation and hosted by Metal Forming Magazine. My name is Brad Coven. I'm the editor of Metal Forming Magazine and I'm pleased to serve as your moderator today. Before we get started, just a few uh, short notes about today's go-to meeting session. Uh, this meeting is being recorded for archiving. Uh, and the recorded event will be posted to our website and to the website of Quaker Chemical within the next few days. Uh, so we'll let you know by email when that recorded webinar is available for viewing online. Also, I want to let you know that all participants in this meeting are in listen-only mode. The speaker and other listeners will not be able to hear any audio from your site during the program. However, you do have the ability to communicate with us throughout the program by submitting your questions and comments using the question box which is located on the right-hand control panel on your GoToMeeting screen. Simply type your question to an organizer as selected from the drop-down menu in that question box. You'll also use that same question panel to ask questions of our speaker at the end of the presentation. So now it's time to begin, uh, to begin today's webinar. Quaker Chemicals Synthetic Fire Resistant Hydraulic Oil has been used, uh, approved for use by several press manufacturers. Uh, here to address that topic today is Ronald Connect, Global Business Development and OEM Manager of Fluid Power for Quaker Chemical Corp. Ronald's an expert in the field of fire-resistant hydraulic fluids with more than 23 years of experience working with end users and original equipment manufacturers. So please welcome Ronald Connect. Okay, thanks Brad. Uh, welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. Uh, today we'd like to discuss the fire risk in press hardening applications and the alternatives available to enhance the safety in your production uh, facility. Uh, first, I'd like to have a few words about uh, the company uh, that I represent, Quake Chemical. Uh, we are almost 100 years old. Uh, we have our headquarters in Conshohocken, so Philadelphia, West Philadelphia. Um, we have about 2,000 uh, associates uh, worldwide. Um, I also like to share we do about 750 million net sales, of which we uh, invest 22 million again in research and development, which is uh, relatively quite a high number, uh, underlining the uh, yeah dye technology that we uh, uh, that we like to sell. Um, these products uh, are mainly sold in uh, steel uh, industry. Um, basically, we have all kinds of lubricants you need between liquid steel and the final coil and uh, also in uh, metalworking industry and then, uh, for instance, in automotive industry, the machining products. Um, what you can see on this screen is uh, a map of where we are worldwide. What you can see is that we are on every continent. Uh, Quaker tries to talk to all the customers, preferably in their own language, if not through a Quaker representative directly, then through a, a distributor. And every continent we have uh, uh, sales offices, we have production facility, so also stock, and we also have uh, research and development uh, facilities on all continents. So now to the topic that we want to uh, talk about today, fire resistance, fire resistant hydraulic fluids in press hardening applications. So the first question is, of course, is there a need at all for fire safety uh, impress hardening operations. Well, uh, what we have learned uh, in our history the last uh, couple of years is um, from a company, a leading press hardening company, uh, they had encountered uh, a couple of fires uh, that resulted in personal injuries but also resulted in uh, yeah, uh, downtime of the press because of uh, repairs. And one of the things is if you have a downtime of your press, you cannot uh, produce and when you cannot produce uh, you cannot supply customers, so that costs you a lot of money. Um, the top management of that company had identified this uh, this risk, and uh, they've started a, a project to uh, to try to to uh, to solve this uh, problem and to come to a more stable production situation. Um, we evaluated several options, and in the end, a fire-resistant hydraulic fluid was the chosen solution. Going a bit more into detail of the uh, solutions, of the, the options that we have uh, evaluated or that company evaluated. Uh, the first 
evaluation, the first option they evaluated is to um, to try to predict the uh, the potential hazardous locations from uh, the blank uh, by putting shields on the protection shields on the uh, around the tooling. The advantage is that you can keep your same technology, but in the end it turned out that there's still a relatively good chance that uh, the hydraulic oil the HOP gets in contact with the hot plank of uh, 900 degrees C, so 1650 Fahrenheit, and you, and you still get your fire, which you don't want to have. Uh, the second alternative uh, that was uh, investigated was the installation of a fire extinguisher system. Um, also, the advantage is that you don't have to do anything about your hydraulic system, but it's quite expensive to install this, and uh, one of the yeah, the biggest problems that you can get with a mineral oil is uh, the fact that when it gets in contact with a hot surface that it can give a explosive ignition uh, resulting in a fireball uh, going to the roof leaving burning oil droplets and yeah, uh, once that has happened the extinguisher switches on and then in the end it doesn't, uh, doesn't bring what you want to, uh, what you want to have. Uh, the third option that was evaluated was to um, go for another hydraulic uh, type of hydraulic fluid, a water glycol. Um, the good thing of a water glycol is that it contains a lot of water and uh, because of the water it is really fire uh, retardant. Um, having said that, uh, we've mentioned all the, uh, all the advantages of this type of uh, hydraulic fluids. Uh, because of the water it is, um, yeah, it has clearly less lubrication performance and also results in uh, yeah, shorter lifetime of your components, your pumps and your valves. Uh, also, the designers of the hydraulic systems uh, noticed that um, um, there are some limitations also on pressure for this, uh, this type of uh, fluids. Uh, normal press hardening line runs at about yeah, 280, 290 bars, which is uh, a bit over 4000 psi. And they noticed that they had to make uh, yeah, significant modifications to the hydraulic unit, which uh, would cost about 150 to 200,000 uh, dollar. So that's uh, quite a high number. Uh, the fourth um, option that uh, they've evaluated was the use of a, a water-free fire-resistant hydraulic fluid, polyester-based HFDU. Um, negative. Uh, the thing that we've uh, that we noticed that we also uh, don't hide is that at 900 degrees everything uh, without water uh, burns to some extent. And uh, but there is a big difference uh, how it uh, burns exactly uh, compared to uh, this explosive uh, nature of a mineral oil. Later on, I will show you some videos and snapshots to explain it in more uh, more detail. Uh, the positive sides of this uh, HFDU. Um, is that um, yeah? It is. Uh, there is no investment needed in your hydraulic system. Uh, the fluid itself comes uh, really close to uh, to mineral oil when it comes to the performance as hydraulic fluid, because that's in the end uh, what you want to have. When it comes to the fire, there is a controlled situation, um, which is uh, uh, so no uh, uh, no extra uh, downtime and uncontrolled uh, damages. And in the end, it turned out to be the most effective. Uh, solution. So, what have we done? Uh, the first line that we have switched uh, is already uh, quite a long time ago, so July 2013. Um, meanwhile, uh, more than 60, line at 60 lines have been switched worldwide at uh, several, uh, several customers. The vast majority is switched from uh, mineral oil to, uh, uh, to the fire resistant uh, polyolester and uh, yeah, a few of them were uh, the first fills. Mm, we have already seen in practice that uh, the fire resistance of this fluid, uh, uh, that it really works. Um, the problem is with uh, press hardening, there's always hydraulic units, hydraulic hoses close to the, uh, the hot plank and small accidents are always there to happen and uh, we've seen that it, uh, that it works. So what have we done before we went into uh, this hydraulic process. Uh, what you can see uh, on the bottom side, uh, we worked together with the uh, Lorisafe, APMT, Schulers and the Fagors to evaluate if this fluid was suited for their uh, presses and 
just in, in, in just in a nutshell that means that we've tested the compatibility with all their components and so that means uh, with the paint with the sealants with the hoses inside and outside uh, but we also get uh, written approvals from uh, pump supplies like Rexroth, like uh, Parker, um, like uh, Moog, uh, just to make sure that everything runs uh, runs fine. And in the end, it turned out that we uh, did not have to make one single change to the hydraulic system uh, before uh, uh, we could run on uh, on this new type of hydraulic fluid, HFDU. Um, meanwhile. Um, this has resulted in, uh, uh, at Lawyer Save, that if you buy a press from them, you will find in the manual that you have to use the Quinta Lubric 8846, which is then uh, the polyolester, uh, uh, water-free polyolester-based hydraulic fluid. APNT, on their website, you can find a, uh, a testimony where they clearly indicate that uh, it works as well as a conventional hydraulic oil and more specific uh, a press release that was issued a couple of months ago about the performance of Quinta Lubric in their presses. Um, just more in general, fire resistance in uh, uh, hydraulic systems. Well, this is uh, just two examples of, uh, of steel plants that are facing some downtime um, because, of, uh, because of a fire. Um, there are, because of this fire, uh, uh, Significant personal injuries can take uh, can take place. If clearly, uh, there is a uh, a lot of capital loss you cannot produce, and your yeah, system of uh, your line is not able to run for uh, for several months if it looks like uh, looks like this. And of course, there are a lot of reasons uh, how you can get a fire, and one of them um, is the one we can uh, fight about and have an alternative for, and that's the uh, the mineral oil. As I said, it's. Uh, a bit high viscous uh, gasoline. It's highly flammable, and it tends to uh, to explode when it comes with significant volumes in contact with uh, with the hot surface. So that's why we recommend to uh, to use a fire-resistant hydraulic fluid for so for these applications. More specific for uh, press hardening applications, uh, as I said, uh, the toolings. There is always the more complex the tools are, the more hydraulics you can find inside the, the tools. Uh, significant chances, uh, risks for uh, burns, fatal accidents, and production stops because of uh, explosions and fires. And the solution is uh, use a fire-resistant uh, polyolester. You will have no explosions, and you will have no spreading of uh, of the fire. So, uh, key points of fire resistance. Uh, what does it mean? In fact, uh, fire resistance mean does not mean that it doesn't burn. Uh, if you want something that really doesn't burn, you need water, and uh, water is good as fire extinguisher, but uh, mm, less suited as hydraulic fluid. So what it's all about, it's about keeping control of the situation. So what is important that, uh, uh, for instance, if your fluid uh, burns, so what's the intensity, what's the fire intensity, what's the smoke formation that you will get uh, uh, when it burns? Uh, time to ignition, does it burn straight away? Uh, or do you have some time to switch off the unit or uh, uh, run? Um, propagation of a flame, that's a simulation, for instance, when you have a small rupture or a bigger rupture in a hose um, where a, a jet is getting out of your hose into or onto a hot surface, catches fire, is it running back into the uh, spray jet, yes or no? To test that, there are a lot of different uh, uh, test methods, uh, the ones we uh, prefer we uh, like the most is uh, Factory Mutual. Factory Mutual is an American insurance company and uh, as far as I know they are the, uh, the only company that is really testing fluids and uh, approving them and saying that they are a uh, yeah, improvement for uh, for safety in, uh, in a plant. Uh, in reality that means that if this uh, company Factory Mutual is doing a risk assessment of your uh, plant and you're using fire of factory mutual approved uh, products uh, that it have a it can has a have a pro uh, positive impact on the premium that you have to pay and i always say that if a insurance company gives you a reduction on the premium they're pretty sure that also the risk is uh, is reduced 
So for those who do not have, uh, uh, are not insured by FM, a factory mutual, um, you can still take benefits of the uh, of the approval itself. Uh, first of all, because it is uh, it is uh, tested and qualified as uh, as a re uh, risk reducing and approved fluid. Um, several insurance companies uh, recognize uh, factory mutual and uh, always take it into account in their risk assessment they uh, they run. So it can have uh, a positive impact on the premium uh, you pay. And yeah, last but not least is the quality obligations for the fluids. Um, everything is filed at Factory Mutual, so the composition, the raw materials, uh, where you buy it, everything. Um, the production facilities we have are all audited at least once per year, so there is nothing you can uh, do or change to the fluid without notifying uh, Factory Mutual. Um, important, some uh, some factors, uh, fire points, our technician temperatures, take in this case for press hardening applications, the uh, the most important parameter is the outer ignition uh, temperature, um, 300 degrees C, 572 Fahrenheit for the mineral oil, and 460 uh, C, 860 Fahrenheit for uh, quintilubric uh, HFDU. Uh, I'm mentioning this uh, uh, values because on the video that I'm going to show in the next uh, slide, uh, we will have a hot plate looking at heated up to uh, about 500, more than 500 C, 932 Fahrenheit, uh, where we pour on some uh, mineral oil and, uh, and quintilubric. Um, I will start the video, but what you will notice is that it will look a bit uh, bumpy, uh, likely, uh, but you will uh, clearly see the uh, explosive nature. You see the vapors being formed, you see the explosion of nature of uh, the mineral oil and putting the whole place on fire. And uh, if you compare that to uh, a polyester, uh, you notice that the contact time, in fact, with uh, the hot surface is too short, and uh, as a result, the uh, the fluid does not uh, does not ignite. Although the surface temperature is much higher, much higher than the out ignition temperature of the uh, of the fluid. So this is what you can call situation under control. Um, if you go to a more uh, a temperature more closer to what you will have in your uh, press hardening application, which is uh, 900 degrees C, uh, 650 Fahrenheit uh, blank, um, there you can perfectly see what happens, uh, what the difference is between the mineral oil and, uh, and quintilubric. Here on this uh, uh, snapshot, you will see the, uh, uh, the mineral oil poured on the hot sheet. It gives a lot of vapors uh, uh, which are spreading around. The moment you get an ignition, it poof, it uh, explodes and you get this, uh, uh, it puts the, all the, uh, the vapors into, uh, into fire. You get this mushroom type of explosion which in the end results in uh, a waterfall of uh, fire. Um, what you, yeah, you cannot see here uh, very well, but also the burning oil that comes on the floor uh, uh, continues to, uh, to burn for, uh, for a while. Um, with the polyolester based hydraulic fluid, uh, you will see that there are no vapors being formed. Uh, there is some ignition on the surface, uh, but there is no explosion. That means that's why you keep your uh, situation under control and some burning droplets that fall on the floor uh, ex extinguish uh, as well. Um, one thing if you want to see uh, the complete videos um, uh, in a normal uh, 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 speed, so normal quality, you can go to YouTube. If you search for Quintilubric, you will uh, well end up in uh, several videos about, uh, about our fluids. So, in summary, on the fire resistance, um, the, <coughs> the fire resistant hydraulic fluids uh, allow you for a swift and easy control of a potential crisis situation. There are no explosive uh, vapors being formed and uh, personal injury and interruption of your production are avoided. So these were the, uh, the, the, the general parts about uh, fire resistance, uh, about specifically for press hardening and uh, 
fire resistance in general. Uh, the following slides are about quintilubric uh, editate as we supply them from Quaker and uh, the other properties you can expect from, uh, from them. So, first of all, we started with this uh, technology in, uh, in the 60s uh, in the United States. Um, it's quite a critical business for, uh, for Quaker. It's uh, taken seriously by the, by the company. It's a an, uh, uniform product. Uh, it's a global brand, a global product as well. Uh, wherever in the world you buy Quinta Lubric uh, Editate, you will get exactly the same uh, formulation and the same uh, performance. It's endorsed by all hydraulic components, uh, suppliers. Uh, I think that's also what we've uh, showed you in one of the earlier slides. And uh, we are in about uh, 50, ever since we started this, we are in about 50,000 systems uh, uh, worldwide. So there is uh, quite some experience with this fluid in hydraulic applications. So what are the fluid benefits? I told you it's about uh, fire safety, factory mutual approved. It's biodegradable. I will have an extra slide about, uh, about that as well. Um, long lifetime. Also have an extra slide about that. The filterability, um, it's yeah, just as good filterable as uh, as a mineral, uh, a standard mineral oil. Uh, it also comes with a uh, guaranteed cleanliness of uh, ISO 4406 901611 or NAS7 uh, roughly. It's compatible with all the general used uh, seal and hose material. Lubrication properties are, are comparable to uh, to mineral oil. It's uh, excellent. Um, excellent compatibility with the generally used uh, metals and, uh, and alloys. No changes uh, needed to uh, hydraulic systems when you come from uh, mineral oil to, uh, to quinta lubric. And there's no special maintenance on the fluid uh, uh, needed. So about our organization, uh, what I've said, uh, uh, also in fluid power, uh, so for the quinta lubrics, it is a true global organization. That means we have uh, 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 one brand, Quintilubic Editate, which is exactly the same wherever you buy it in the world. Uh, production facility and stock. We have on every continent. Um, every uh, facility is also audited by uh, by Factory Mutual to guarantee the the quality that we uh, that we supply. We have research facilities on every continent. We have uh, normal laboratories for sample analysis and uh, another support that we uh, we need to give. We have technicians, uh, sales, uh, specialized sales guys on every continent. And as said, we are approved by uh, hydraulic press and manufacturers. About the fluid lifetime, um, in when you maintain your fluid in a, in a proper way or uh, your hydraulic system also in a proper way. So system temperatures 40 to 50 degrees C, so 104 to 122 Fahrenheit. You would have proper filtration, uh, air breathers, so to keep the filter, to keep the air coming in uh, at least clean and, uh, and a bit dry. Do some fluid analysis. In fact, what you do is uh, exactly the same what you should do with uh, with the mineral oil to uh, enjoy uh, that life long. So there's nothing special about it. If you do it like this with quinta lubric, uh, the fluid life time will be uh, more than 75,000 system hours uh, is achievable. And that is more than uh, than eight years, and that is without leakage. And uh, what you uh, normally have, if you have 10, 15 percent leakage, uh, there is no uh, there is no refreshment needed uh, uh, at all. And uh, so that is yeah, that's quite uh, quite significant, quite enough. Um, service and maintenance that we uh, that we uh, supply to our fluids. Um, well, we have uh, all kinds of labels for you uh, available that you can put in your uh, on your hydraulic unit uh, to avoid that uh, uh, mineral oil is added to your system by uh, by coincidence. Uh, we have uh, sampling uh, programs. We have uh, recommendations for sampling uh, 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 procedures. We can set them up together uh, with you, uh, and uh, and yeah made them uh, tailor-made uh, with you so that you always take the right sample at the right uh, place. Uh, fluid analysis, of course. Um, fluid analysis sheet, if you send us a sample or we pick up a sample, uh, we do analysis and uh, report it uh, a bit like this. The figures that I've mentioned in this slide are uh, just uh, uh, 
they don't exist. It's just the figures I wrote uh, wrote down to have a few data and to make a graph for you. Uh, so what we measure in our analysis, it's appearance, asset value, a viscosity, water level, and the cleanliness. Uh, important parameter is the uh, asset value. Uh, normally you get it supplied at about 1.7, 1.8. Uh, milligram kOH a gram. Uh, we recommend to run it until uh, maximum eight, and then uh, you are recommended to organize or schedule uh, a, a fluid uh, change. But as I said, uh, if you have 10, 50 percent leakage, it's not very likely you will ever uh, reach that point. Uh, another point that's important is the uh, the water level of the of the fluid. Uh, normally, you get your fluid. Uh, supplied with yeah three four hundred ppm of uh, water, and uh, we recommend to uh, uh, not to go over two thousand ppm uh, of water uh, in your uh, in your system. Normally, uh, in the applications that you have uh, for press hardening, that's not likely to uh, uh, to achieve. But if in any case uh, you manage to get there, get over two thousand ppm, um, the Standard measures you can take with the mineral oil, so the vacuum dehydrators can be used for uh, for the quintilubic uh, uh, as well. Biodegradability, uh, we just uh, already mentioned uh, that uh, the fluid itself, the polyester, it's based on uh, renewable uh, resources. Uh, it's yeah, at least more than 80% uh, biodegradable. Um, 46 is slightly more than uh, than the uh, than 68, but more than 80 is, uh, is an excellent uh, result. What are endangering class? Um, that is, uh, uh, yeah, the lowest possible is uh, is one, and uh, what what endangering class is an uh, indication of the risk, or yeah, the risk that this uh, fluid brings when it is uh, exposed to to a river. Uh, it measures fish tox toxicity, uh, algae toxicity, that kind of uh, things. So there's no hazard label on the drum. Uh, we've tested it as uh, non-irritant to skin and, uh, and eyes. And on the product there are no uh, precautionary and hazard phrases uh, uh, to be found. So when you convert the mineral oil to, uh, from mineral oil to quintilubric, we have uh, conversion procedures uh, available uh, to help you in that. Uh, nevertheless, we also recommend to uh, to talk with the uh, uh, the constructor of the of the press, uh, because uh, with all the other changes that we've made, you have uh, quite a lot of experience to uh, to do it in the shortest possible time and to do it smoothly, and also to uh, uh, get or to to get stuck with. As little as possible mineral oil as pollution in your uh, in the fire resistant fluid. Um, so experience, uh, just in 2014, uh, we changed uh, 40 of these presses from uh, mineral oil to uh, to quintilubric. Um, we've made nil changes to the uh, to any unit. Um, all Rexroad Park pumps, servo valves from MOOC, uh, Rexroad seals, and we are. Uh, there was no uh, no problem uh, whatsoever or difference observed compared to uh, to the mineral oil. In fact, it was better than uh, on some points than than the mineral oil. It's trouble free trouble free operation and what I've said the fire resistance. Uh, we have proven in uh, in practice. So that brings us almost to the last uh, slide of this uh, of this uh, seminar. So. In a summary, for quintilubric A to date, what you can expect is an uh, enhanced uh, safety, biodegradable, environmental friendly. It's uh, yeah, excellent hydraulic uh, performance, uh, best in class, user lifetime for polyolesters, uh, global formulation from a global market leader, and uh, it's endorsed by all the hydraulic uh, uh, yeah, uh, component uh, OEMs. And I think that brings us to our last uh, slide, so that's nicely within uh, within a half an hour. And Brad, I'd like to give the word back to uh, to you. Very good, thank you Ronald. Uh, we okay. do have some time for questions. Uh, if there's anybody out there that wants to go ahead and pose a question to, to Ronald, use that question panel, uh, which is down on the right hand 
side of your screen. Uh, we do have a few questions. Um, does Quaker make a fire retardant press lube, 150 weight, that's compatible with Quinto Lubric 888? Um, the fire so is that's uh, apparently uh, a lubricant for the presses itself, uh, for the uh, for between the tools and the uh, and the blank. Uh, we don't have one. Uh, we don't have one yet. We don't have one yet. Okay. But it's uh, it's a question that we've heard uh, a few times uh, before. And uh, yeah, I understand you do a manufacture of fire resistant grease, though. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We do uh, manufacture fire resistant greases, and in fact, we also have. Uh, uh, this grease is in uh, uh, in use on the uh, on the press hardening presses at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question is: Can you talk a little bit about um, water contamination? Does it affect the performance of of the oil, uh, and can the uh, water be separated from the hydraulic fluid? Should it become uh, contaminated? Yeah. Well. Mm, uh, yeah, I also mentioned it uh, briefly already. Uh, the fluid itself contains only uh, three, four hundred ppm's of uh, of water. Uh, what the pollution that can take place in a hydraulic system can be, yeah, the two main reasons is uh, or from the sky, uh, or from a uh, yeah, broken uh, cooler. Uh, when it comes from the sky, uh, yeah, to be honest, for press hardening plants, that chances. Uh, Quite uh, minimal. Uh, we see oh, in all the units that we have so far, we see water levels not higher than uh, five, six hundred uh, ppm of uh, of, uh, of water. Um, we've tried to uh, uh, to keep that to a minimum to install uh, water dryers on top of the tank, but because of the strokes made in these presses, uh, you can see that the, there's a lot of uh, oil going to the cylinders and there's a lot of air going in, so you need uh, quite huge uh, air dryers to uh, to make that effective. But as I said, the uh, the air is relatively dry, so I don't think there's a real uh, issue with that. Um, when there is uh, a cooler break uh, and water, really a lot of free water gets into your system, and you have to follow the same procedures. What you do for uh, a mineral oil? And that means that you have to, uh, well, you have to, to to stop the water getting in. That's uh, one thing. And secondly, is you have to uh, drain the water from the bottom, and then uh, you can uh, dry the oil uh, with standard uh, equipment like a vacuum dehydrator units or mm -hmm. uh, 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 water absorbing uh, filters. Okay. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the equipment. Uh, are there any special requirements for for seals, for example, that are needed with this? With uh, the, uh, no, oil? no, no. In fact, uh, the Quinto Lubric is uh, compatible with uh, all the the standard seals that you uh, that you use in a hydraulic system, and that you would use for uh, for mineral oil. So there's no uh, no special uh, uh, special tension needed uh, for that. We check it always, but we always found out that the performance of our fluid is comparable to uh, to mineral oil. Okay. So when you're switching over, um, do you just empty the hydraulic fluid from the tank? Is the question, and just refill it with Quinta Lubric, or is there any other prep that's needed beforehand? Uh, now, what we do, the uh, well, the, first of all, the fluids itself, they are uh, what we've tested so far. They're always compatible, mineral oil and the Quinta Lubric. You can mix them in in any ratio at any temperature, so that's uh, that's a good thing. Uh, what is normally uh, done? By uh, during the changeover is that we drain uh, the tank. Uh, that's one thing. But we also empty all the all the pipes, and uh, even uh, what I've uh, seen as well is that we go with uh, tubes into uh, big pipes to empty them as much as we uh, uh, as we can, and then we add on the uh, the Quinto Lubric, uh, we flush a bit, and uh, then we uh, do the final filling and. Yeah, in all these uh, 60 presses that we have uh, changed, well, not we, but uh, the customers have changed. Uh, by far, the major, the far majority, uh, noticed that they had uh, about 3% mineral oil uh, left. And uh, but that was also I have to repeat it again. That was uh, uh, with the help of the of the OEM, who knows exactly uh, which 
uh, a bowl to have to open to uh, to drain as much as possible uh, oil. Okay, good. So, Ms. Dillard, I'd like you to repeat the uh, uh, question about the uh, press lube uh, that's fire resistant. You said you don't have a press lube, but you do have a grease. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, uh, I was assuming that uh, they meant with press lube uh, a lubricant that you need to uh, between uh, the blank and the uh, and, and, and and the tool. I thought that was the uh, that was the uh, that was that question. Yeah, unfortunately, that person has not uh, is not with us right now. I, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, what about are, are there other fire resistant lubes used at the press uh, that you have experience with? Um, no, not that that I've experienced with. And uh, also, as far as I know, the only thing what we have, what I've seen so far, is uh, yes, hydraulic fluids and the. Uh, and, and, and the greases, actually. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions from our audience? Uh, we do have a few minutes left with Ronald. Uh, if not, you see his email address up on the screen uh, if you'd like to reach out to him personally. Any more questions going once? Then we'll wrap it up. Ronald, thank you very much for your presentation. Okay. Thank everybody for attending today. We hope everyone found it to be a very valuable experience. Again, please remember uh, that a recorded uh, archive of this program will be available on our website and that of Quaker Chemical uh, within the next few days. We'll email you uh, when the webinars have been posted to, uh, to our websites. So you'll be able to review what you learned today and share it with others uh, within your organization. So again, thank you for attending. Thank you, Ronald, for your presentation. Okay. Uh, everyone uh, have a yep, have a great afternoon and you can close your browsers now.